Need some art for your walls? I got you covered. Amazing 8x10 prints, all handmade by me. Gorgeous colors, brilliant shine, and canon perfection. Four new prints every month. This is danbell.com. Shop now. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's Dan Bell and I am back for another episode of Cutting Room Floor. I don't remember when is the last time I did one of these, but a lot of people have been asking me to bring this back. So here it is. If you would like to see it early, you can do so on patreon.com slash this is Dan Bell. And... Of course, you can always shop at thisisdanbell.com for all my uh, um, critically panned photography. Um, okay, so <laughs> we're jumping into this. Uh, this is a little open I did here. Uh, this was a really difficult video to make. A lot went into this. Here, This shot here is just uh, stock footage. I use a lot of stock footage uh, just to tie up the the knots. Well, tie up the loose ends, I should say. I love how this is director's commentary. I didn't really direct anything. I just filmed it, but uh, we'll just pretend. Um, so all these shots here were done with a Sony Handycam, a cheap camera. Um, but I like having it in the arsenal because you never know. If I go to a place that's really, really sketchy, I pull out the Sony Handycam because my main camera, I don't want it to get stolen. So Now this place, uh, if you look up this location on Google Earth or satellite, it is just, there's so many buildings back in these woods. And uh, I really wanted to uh, explore this for a long time, but uh, never, uh, just never got around to doing it. It probably would have been better off doing it in the winter instead of having to walk through these um, these, I don't know what they are, weeds? All I know is they're not poison ivy, <laughs> but when I came out of this place, I was so itchy. I was itching all over. I'm so allergic to everything. Um, so here we are in this little clearing here. That is Steph Brom, who is a uh, local here in Baltimore. Well, he just moved here from, I think, Ohio, but uh, I saw he was going places. Uh, so I asked him if he'd come along. Um, we heard uh, what sounded like gunshots, but um, I'm pretty sure they were fireworks. Though, I don't know, they sounded like gunshots, but they I think they were fireworks. All the little things you see flying around are mosquitoes. And they are chewing and eating us alive. <laughs> um, the first night I came up here, this was my second night here. The first night I went by myself. And um, I filmed the, uh, the little uh, loading dock area there where it says um, F Hope. I went dope. Um, with the needles all over the floor and stuff. And and I filmed in there and then I went up through a hole in the wall and started walking up through a bunch of trash into the woods. And I see this giant building in front of me. And um, my reaction is pretty, well, it is genuine. I had no idea that building was there. Um, it, look, it almost looked like a, like a, like an asylum or something in the middle of the woods. Unfortunately, 
the place is um completely uh collapsed inside there had been a fire so there was no way to get in all these needles everywhere it's very very disconcerting i i must say i've been filming these bandos for years now um i think i started back in 2014 so it's been nearly 10 years uh that i've been doing this and I, I've been filming a lot in Baltimore. Back in the day, I filmed, you know, the Children's Asylum, Uplands, um, the Meat Factory, which in this video I return to, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. Um, but back then, you never saw, maybe every once in a while, you would see a needle. But it wasn't like, like it is now, where there are literally just hundreds of needles in these places that we go now this location is very close to like mount claire new carrollton which are both like pretty bad neighborhoods and uh very very uh uh infested with uh drugs but you can see people just there's a plunger there's just needles everywhere no regard um which made me kind of nervous to walk through all this garbage because i'm like am i gonna step on a needle so this is when i was there by myself the way i cut this it looks like it's all at one night but it's two nights and this is where i'm walking and i look up and see the building i'm like holy shit there's a building <laughs> I, I was, I just, I couldn't believe it when I saw how big it was. I, I really was uh, quite chagrined that I couldn't go inside. I really wanted to see the, the second floor and stuff. I think over in the field that we walked through to get to this area, um, allegedly that part of the building is still intact but there was no way to get in so basically these buildings are death traps i mean honestly if you if you uh go in and you try to hoist yourself into different rooms or walk on you know like you can see what somebody did here they put a board down to walk across if that's how you're going to do it you're going to get hurt these buildings are best to just uh, stay out of. But if this place was hadn't burned and was in good condition, it would be a really cool building to to go through. Now again, people ask, why do you go at night? Why do you film these places at night? It's not really a. It's not really a decision. I mean, it's. Not, <laughs> I, I'm most active at night. I'm like a vampire um, or a bat. Like that's when I'm like up and ready to work. Except for weeks where I get up in the morning, like this week. I get up in the morning, take the dog for a walk, um, do my little chores, and then I get to work. Um, so it's. It just depends, but. Uh, I think going at night certainly um, makes for a more exciting video. Look at this building. Oh, man. I wish I could get upstairs. Another goddamn needles. More needles. Um, so going at night, I, I, I mean, back in the day, like, I can't remember. Maybe it was the meat factory or maybe it was the children's asylum. When I started going at night, um, everybody was like, why are you going? You're just doing it for views. I'm like, no shit. Like, what the fuck do you think I'm doing it for? <laughs> but um, I'm like, no shit. I'm doing it for views. <laughs> um, so it, it kind of, uh, I started doing it and then everyone started doing it. Everyone started going at night. So... But seriously, um, 
most of this stuff is because I'm just not a morning or daytime person. <laughs> I prefer to go out and shoot at night. I think this would be just as equally scary in the daytime, this, this location here. Uh, I did not go up the... Uh, this is from the first night, me actually going into this one. And I, I have no clue what this place was. You see all of these windows. Um, maybe it was some kind of a window supply company or window company. I don't know. Whatever this place was, these have not been in operation in decades. But that whole area down there, if you look at it on satellite, it's a bunch of bandos. Um, it's uh, it's just really um, a sh it's just shady. It's shady as shit down there. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, there's a lot of junkyards and stuff, and but it is shady. Here's my my light died. Oh, it was so annoying. You know, I I gotta say, um. I bought these two lights so I'd have two lights if they charge up and they were like $150 a piece and they're small and they're rechargeable and everything I'm right back using my $15 Amazon light that you can put fucking batteries in I know it's not environmentally friendly but um I should get the dis the rechargeable batteries, but then that puts me at peril again. I'd rather just have, like, I love the throw of that $15 light. It's so cheap, <laughs> it's just, but it works um, so much better than the, uh, the $150 light. So I'm just right back using my um, Amazon lights again. This place here um, is near, it's kind of in the wooded area, but it's not. It's over on, um, what is that road? Frederick Road? Um, this place, uh, I added into the video. Um, it's not, it, it is right where we were, but it's just not, you, you go, in here, not through the woods, but in uh, over on the, the road. I think it's Frederick Road. And apparently this was uh, a place where they did auctions. I don't know if it was auto auctions or stuff, but... Uh, the gate and everything had always been locked. And then um, I had seen on the Citizen app that there was a fire over there and went over and the uh the gate was unlocked so you could just open it up and go in <laughs> i was like damn um so went in and uh, shot this footage another old place who knows what this was here's a nice uh little shot of a bat flying around here where is he there he is there's Bella Lugosi. Bats, they're my friends. I love bats. Um, uh, a lot of people said, oh, that you can hear the bat. It's just sound effects. <laughs> There's, the bat wasn't like squeaking as it flew by. I was just putting in sound effects. Uh, I believe that back door goes outside to a back... Um, there's like a there's like a path uh, a path back there between the building and a wall with a fence and on the other side of the wall with the fence is the buildings that you see earlier in the video and then I just cut back to this so it seems like there's some clever editing there. It seems like, oh, that was, you know, right where we were. What a crazy place. But um, it's, it's not. 
<laughs> it's actually uh uh it's, it's probably about uh, 500 feet from this place so I kind of wanted to go into this basement, but um, it literally was like a a place just to do drugs and sleep, but there was no one there. This freaked me out. I thought it was a rib cage. I, I was like, "That is a rib cage," but thankfully, it was not a rib cage. <laughs> and you can see the. The squatters had put uh, chairs and tables and everything. This here, this black and white, is a shot from uh, Steph's uh, camera video. And here we're inside of this disintegrating room, which is back in the auction house, I think. Yeah, it was back in the auction house. Now this here gets a little tricky. So um we're in the woods. There this car comes here, you'll see in a minute, and it stops. And I really get panicked because there's there's the car and I'm telling Steph to turn his light off. Now everyone said, Oh, he's fumbling, he can't even turn his own light off. Well, it wasn't his light, it was my light. It was my backup light. So there's this car. It was my backup light, so he didn't know how to turn it off, and I was just in a panic. I just wanted to get it from him, so I said, take it off your, your camera. Um, and he did. But uh, there were two ways out of here. The way we came in, which was a nightmare, and then walking down a path right to the road, when the dogs and stuff, the dogs across the street and there's like a junkyard. When they started barking, I was like, oh shit, the person got out of their car. They're coming, you know, they're, I th you know, you don't know. Are we going to get robbed? Um, that's what I was freaking out about. <laughs> I did not want to be robbed. Uh, so, um... And another, there's a man walking by. So I was quite panicked, um, especially we had to walk. And I don't remember what time it was. It was probably early evening, maybe like 10 o'clock. But we were all the way over on the other road. So we had to walk a good quarter mile, half mile from here over to my truck and um, through a pretty shitty neighborhood. Um, I just told Steph, I said, if uh, I love this shot here with that, that lone house and then the, the blinking uh, things. I always uh, drive around and just do shots like this every once in a while. Just, just so I have like, you know, things to, to have. Um, But, uh, yeah, but uh, we had to walk through. It was, we, we got back in one piece. We were fine. Now, here we are at the meat factory. Now, back in the day, I, it was 2016, I think, Will Karpinski and I went to the meat factory and explored the building. It took three visits to finally film the whole building. I never filmed across the street because... The door across the street was always blocked, and you could hear dogs inside. And there were a bunch of people staying in this building at that time. Now, we ran into this man. Now, I have no idea how this man is even alive. Um, the, the smell of garbage and human waste and mold is enough to sting your your eye. I mean, it it's really bad. Um, this here looks like an old structure right there. 
an old homeless structure. So I was surprised to see this little path through here, and I'm like, somebody's walking in and out of this place. There's a dog cage. Um, and how things were kind of like organized in a weird way um, over on the floor. But to be totally honest, when I saw that man, I thought he was dead. I did. I thought it was a dead body. Um, you know, of course, people. Uh, there was there was some controversy. I mean, some people were like, "Oh, you should have left. You disturbed him." Blah blah blah. Well, we weren't expecting anyone to be in this place, like in the middle of the fucking night sleeping like we just were not expecting that at all and number two i'm not gonna just leave i mean this is an industrial building it's not some little house or something i mean if, it, if we were going up in a row house and there was someone staying upstairs yeah i'd leave i would absolutely leave but this is a industrial property um you know i came here to film and uh that's what i'm gonna do um, people, you know, I think have this kind of weird, um, idea of homelessness when they don't live in the city. Like a lot of people in the suburbs think, oh, you know, let's bring blankets. Let's, and, and all that stuff is good. Let's bring blankets and canned food and blah, blah, blah. But you have to understand how this man is able to stay here. And it's because he's on drugs. There's no other way that a person, when you're looking at this, it, with this kind of condition, which is not even relatively close to living condition, any kind of living condition. Look at the, the trash and rodents and mud and human shit and everything um the man is on drugs now something has to happen before he decides to change and that's when he hits rock bottom now this to me looks like rock below rock bottom this this is like looking on up at the bottom uh but he hasn't gotten to that point yet will he ever i don't know i don't know but i will say this if he said could you bring me food could you you know that's fine i people are like did you give him money did it? i'm not giving him money the reason i'm not giving him money is because i don't want to be responsible for his death i don't give drug addicts money because I'm afraid that I give them five, ten dollars, their next hit that they purchase with the money I gave them is going to kill them. I can't, if I, I just can't live with that thought. So I don't do it. Food, water, you know, clothing, whatever. I got you covered. I'm not giving you any money. And you'd be surprised. How many people over the years I've offered food, food and uh, water and clothing and they don't want any of it. They just want money <laughs> because they want to get high. Um, it's a sad situation, but when you live downtown as long as I have, look at how that metal is just disintegrating. You, you understand the game. You know, everyone's hustling. Everyone's hustling. Doesn't matter what walk of life you're at. Everybody's hustling in the city. So it's just how things are. Now, let me get into what happened here. It got very hot up here. Like it was like the tropics. It the the floor was black with all of this shit everywhere. The the ceiling had just fallen apart. And uh, I said, oh, God, I need a window. I need a window. I just need some fresh air. And there was no window with fresh air. I just looked in here and I said, oh, my God. There's no windows. And um, 
I went into pan- into a panic thing because I I just I did not want to have to go down the same way and out the same way we came in. But I had no choice. I had to leave. Um, because I honestly I didn't want to. I just didn't want to fuck around with that that man on the who was sleeping on the mattress. I just wanted to let it be and get the fuck out. Um, now, if you go to Step Brahm's channel, B-R-A-H-M, you can see his continued tour during the day he went upstairs where another homeless man is living. Uh, but there's a, there's a sort of a, a shoot where the train tracks are right next to this building. So the cattle were brought into this building. They were slaughtered and then they sent the meat on a conveyor belt that went across the road here into the actual meat factory where it was cut up and processed. And that's the the hill over there. That's where the meat factory right behind me was where the meat factory was. The, that huge building that I never thought would be torn down has been completely leveled. It is gone. It is just piles of dirt now. I don't know what they're going to put there, but um, that entire building's gone. Here's me just sort of recovering. I'd be puffing away on cigarettes if I still smoked. I actually, uh, on the 21st, which is just in a few days, is my one-year no-smoking anniversary. I quit smoking. Otherwise, I would have been puffing away in this scene. But it feels great to be back doing these videos again. It's been so long, and I just, uh, I really missed working. I, I love to work, so this is something that I truly miss doing. And I'm so happy to be back and everyone enjoying the, the videos. It's wonderful. So I want to thank you all very much for tuning in for this little uh, thing. I'm going to be having another cutting room floor next week stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching